Hello and welcome to another episode of My Retro Watches. This episode is hopefully a very quick one really. It's just to show how to replace a crystal on the Seiko SKX. This particular one is an SKX013, so it's the reduced size. I think it's 38 mil. Uh, but the principle is the same, as far as I'm aware, on all of the uh, Seiko SKX. So I'll take you onto the bench, we'll remove the bezel, and uh, I'll show you how to get the crystal out, and then, of course, how to fit the new crystal. So let's go straight over to the bench. Okay, here is the uh, watch itself. Uh, okay, it's minus the movement because the movement is here, all serviced and ready to go back in the watch. The movement itself is a 7S26. Uh, I've already done a full series on the uh, disassembly and assembly of this video. So if you do want to follow those at any point in time, there'll be a link coming across the top of the screen right now. Failing that, just check out my uh, playlists and you'll find them there. So uh, this watch was sent to me by somebody I know and um, he wore it for many years. And, and then put it in a drawer like many people do. And thus the watch completely seized. It took a while to get the movement running actually, but that's a separate issue. Uh, the, the bezel itself is completely and utterly stuck fast. And there's plenty of dirt and grime on the bracelet. Uh, and that's obviously a sign of good wear. So the crystal is Hardlex, so it's a glass crystal. Uh, you can't really polish these uh, very well, so the best thing to do is replace them. And to replace that, I need to first of all remove the bezel. Now, removing a bezel, uh, if you've not done it before, on um, one of these sort of watches, um, you just need a case knife. Now, I have got the version one, which of course is quite expensive for what it is. However, I have used cheap ones over the years. And the cheap ones are just that. The ends all break up. They're not made of hardened steel like the version one is. I think this, off the top of my head, maybe £20. So it's a lot of money for what it is. But this will probably see me out of my whole entire watch um, hobby, I would I would think. So a worthy investment. Um, I wish I was getting endorsed by version. Really do. Uh, but uh, sadly not. So to remove it, what we have to do is we have to sort of pry. So we've got to get the knife. Now the trouble is I'm left-handed and I could only buy a right-handed knife, um, but I'm still confident I'll be able to do it. And we need to get it in between the case and the bezel. And we've got to try and pry the two open. Now it's never easy and you don't really want to be marking the case. And of course, this one is quite seized as well. So I'm going to just try it this way, which is counterintuitive for me. And not quite. It's starting to show signs. So you can hear it wants to come off. I'm guessing this is quite blocked underneath. There we go, finally. So once you've got a little bit up, we can just sort of go round and voila. Oh, <laughs> yeah, voila indeed. So as you can see, there is a lot of gunk inside here. And of course, there's a lot of DNA around there too. So this is gonna to have to have a big clean in the ultrasonic, but I'll scrape that out first of all. Um, I can probably uh, replicate a new person out of the DNA in there, I would assume. Uh, out of um, a side note, because I've come across this problem many times before, stuck bezels. So certainly on a Seiko, if you've got a very stiff bezel, what it can be, as much as it can be gunk, in here, in this recess, there is a gasket. And I'm not gonna try and pick it out just yet. Um, and what that can do is it can go hard or it can sort of come out of its position 
and crease a little bit and that will just act as a brake as it's going around when you're trying to twist it and I've seen that many occasions and the remedy is obviously to replace the gasket if you can um, and, or just trying to clean it up and give it a bit of an oil uh, to try and lubricate it and make it work better. Um, so there we go, so the bezel is now off, of course we've got to clean this and what I also need to do first of all is I need to remove the bracelet and remove the case back in order to get to the crystal. So I'll just do that off camera. Okay, so case back is off and the bracelet was a bit of a struggle, but it's come off. And now that reveals the, the aperture so we can get in here. Now, um, these are a friction fit basically. So it's a nice sort of faceted or bezeled crystal there and it's friction fit and in there there should be like a hard nylon rubber uh, nylon rubber nylon plastic uh, gasket uh, on rare occasions you could push this out with your thumb um, but not on this one it's seized in tight so we're gonna have to use a watch press uh, with a die to try and force the uh, crystal back out so we can then clean everything up and fit the new one so I'll just set up for the watch press and we'll press this one out. Right, so I've got the watch press out and I've selected a die that will fit into this hole to push on the glass. Uh, I'm also just gonna quickly remove, because I forgot it has the, uh, I don't know what you call this exactly, it's the spring uh, for the bezel itself. And uh, that's containing all of the muck really but I want to move that out of the way just in case uh, we do anything wrong because we don't want to damage that as well uh, so literally just going to put it in the watch press come down with the die and push and there we go the crystal is out no problem at all and then it has gasket which you can see here now um, I've not been able to get a new one so I was going to inspect this first of all probably give it a good clean uh, you can get these if you measure them it's quite easy enough to do so uh, so I'll either get a new one or I'll just clean this one up and put it back in when I come to fit it uh, so before we do the fitting of course I've now got to spend some time cleaning all of these parts because uh, I don't want them looking this dirty. And then I also need to make sure I can get that bezel uh, working properly as well. So the, uh, what will happen now is I'll put these all into the ultrasonic and let them have a really good clean, uh, dry them off, and then proceed with the next bit. Right then, I've cleaned the case in the ultrasonic and hopefully you can see there that all of that DNA and dirt and gunk has gone. Uh, the bezel I did by hand with a toothbrush. Uh, I didn't want to risk putting that in any cleaning fluids just in case it started taking any of the print off um, and cleaned all of the grooves at the bottom there. Took the gasket out and oiled the gasket that was inside there. Uh, so all we've got to do now is fit. I've brought out this um, watch press. This watch press uh, is about £10. And I just prefer it for these sort of crystals because you want to come down nice, straight and parallel. And I think we have a little bit more control over what we do trying to get it in using this one um, so first of all got to put the I still don't know what it's called the bezel click uh, back in uh, the gasket will just sit back in that recess there he says now the gasket does have a, um, a right and a wrong way um, it's thinner at the top, thicker at the bottom, and uh, you've got to make sure that you put it in the right way. You can see it by eye, uh, just about. So once you're happy with that, bring in, I've got a, a, a genuine Seiko crystal. crystal. Uh, I found that one on eBay. There's the old one by comparison. And we need to place the crystal on top and make sure we think that it's as square as it can be. Uh, this is always the tricky bit, and um, once you think you've got it lined up, then we can get it into the 
into the watch press. So I'll just get that lined up now. I need to get my eyes a bit closer to it and then we'll put it in the press. Okay, I'm fairly happy with that. Uh, my hand is probably going to be in a little bit in the way. Trying to think if I can do it. Um, and now, incidentally, I've got a flat die on the bottom, on the top, sorry. And then I just want to apply steady pressure. I'm going to keep looking at it to make sure it's going in how I want it to. looking okay at the moment take it off take it out have a look and the acid test is if I push from the back uh, it doesn't come out so that means it's in properly, which is what you want. Of course, you want to look around the ridge here, make sure that it's sitting uh, flat. Uh, so all I've got to do now is uh, refit the bezel. So I'll show you how we do that. And then I'll put the move back, back in and you can see the finished watch. Right, so um, incidentally, obviously I'm using my fingers. I've got vain attempt to putting finger cuts on to prevent fingerprints, but that didn't uh, make any difference. So I use glasses wipes. Uh, initially, that will get off any grease on the uh, both sides. Whoops, forgot about that. And we can do that inside, and of course I'll do that a little bit better later on. So to put the bezel on, uh, for those who don't know, again, I don't apply any oil to these or any grease. Uh, some people say you should. Um, some people say you shouldn't and I'm on the shouldn't camp uh, purely because if you put grease in there okay it might help with the um, the thing to start with but over years dust and grime is going to get in there and it'll get stuck to the grease and if it gets stuck to the grease that will sort of turn into a mass and then eventually it's going to seize again so I go basically keep it as it is so to put a bezel on we just want to line it up as best we can I brought in this little chopping board uh, just because I want something hard to press on but nothing that will mark it. Um, so I'm going to lie it down like that and I'm going to push. And as you can hear, that's gone on straight away. And now you can probably hear that as well as see it. The bezel is working again once more. So there we have it. So I'll just case the movement so you can see the finished article and then that will be it. And there we go. So the watch is completely rebuilt. Movements in there. Nice, clean, new crystal. Looks absolutely fantastic. Uh, so there we go. Hopefully uh, this video helps somebody out there who's uh, wanting to do this for themselves on their SKX and they haven't got the courage. You've now got a video that will show you a little bit how to do it. So thank you very much for watching. I really do hope that you enjoyed this video and perhaps you found it useful. Uh, consider subscribing to the channel and click the bell button so you're alerted to more content which is coming very soon. I've got lots of new plans uh, for loads of different projects. Um, and a big shout out of course to my Facebook group uh, Retro and Vintage Watches and Restorations. If you're into watches, especially retro and vintage ones, or you want to learn a bit more about how to fix them or how to diagnose what the problem is, then come into my group and uh, all the members in there are absolutely fantastic and they will help you as much as possible. So I'll catch you very soon in the next one. Bye for now.